Hey YouTube, I'm here to talk to you about a little experience that I had today, that I'm maybe 10 minutes removed of what seems like the end of it, and it has to do with this new copyright thing rolling out with YouTube, so topical. I'd like to state at the beginning of this video that in this video I'm not going to be slandering or insulting anyone. All I plan to do is talk about the exact facts of what's happened today, without any kind of personal opinion input, simply the facts of what happened and the legal facts of everything going on. So, you'll notice I keep looking over here a lot. This is actually me looking at my own face, which I tend to do a lot, because I've moved the window that I usually use for that to the side so that I can read this. You'll see on my Twitter that I've been talking to a Jeff Price. He is the founder, as it says on his Twitter, the founder of a Adayim, Adayim, and TuneCore. Also spin art, but that's not related to the current thing. So, uh, this morning, I got a content claim on one of my older videos, and in this video, um, it said, the, the claim said that, uh, it, the claim was by Adayim and, um, Toon something. It says TuneCore here, but that's not the name they used on it, but Adayim is the big one. And it said that they owned content from the timecode of 5205. Now that video at that timecode is going to be in the description so you can review it as well and it claimed to be using a song that they owned. So I went ahead and I reviewed it, and by the way, I didn't even have to review it if I didn't want to, because the thing is, I'm covered under fair use with this video, but I'll get into that a little bit later. I click on the video, and I check the time code, and at first I think, well, what's going on? This must be a completely false claim. I don't hear any music. This is ridiculous. So I dispute it, I take a screenshot of it and upload it, and the reason I take a screenshot of it and upload it is not only how ridiculous the whole situation seems, but I've taken up a new policy of publicly disclosing, I'm going to publicly show every time I get one of these content ID claims, because so many of them are such garbage, like the other week when I was content ID claimed by THQ, which does not exist anymore. And it was a false claim, by the way. So I get this claim, and I say, I, I type in my usual stuff of, I believe this was made in error, because I thought it was made in there. I believe this was a bot misidentifying it. Honest mistake. Really absurd on YouTube's part, but an honest mistake. I upload it, I show it, because that's what I do. And I dispute it, because I'm in my legal rights. 20 minutes later, they, t they didn't agree with my dispute, and they put a claim again. So I dispute it again, which is the second stage's appeal, where I have to put in my personal information and say no. I know my rights. So I did that, and they have not responded yet. They have 30 days to respond or the claim is dropped. If they want, they can issue a takedown notice, and then I can appeal that and say, no, this is the last straw, this is like, it's this or court. I'm basically saying either I'm right or you're legally allowed to sue me, in which I already know I'm right in this, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, I'm protected under fair use because that video... As you'll see if you watch the video, it's in the description, is it's an old stream I did. And the reason that's covered over fair use is because the song that they claim to have used, I personally can't hear it. I crank my volume all the way, my headset, it's a decent headset, I crank the volume all the way and I do not hear this song that they're claiming to be there. However, my friend Doug, who I, he's got better hearing than I do, I guess, he said that when he really cranks the volume, he can hear slight bits of a song. You can hear slight bits of a song that's within the video game I was playing at the time, which is the Guild 2 Renaissance. And that game, um, in fact, quite a few songs in that game you'll recognize from other games. And the reason is because they used a Dium, TuneCore, whatever's uh, service of they purchased uh, the rights to all these different artists' music and they used it in their game. Which is, that makes sense. In fact, that's something often that uh, lower budget companies will do like that they'll go and purchase license. They purchased, purchased a license from Adayim, I guess, to use this music. Now, here's the thing. So the music was in the game. I couldn't hear it, but okay, the music... Let's say that the music was in the game at that part. I don't know how it was even identified. But here's the reason why it's absolutely absurd that that was content ID claimed. Adayim, and by extension Jeff Price, the founder of it, as it says on his uh, page here, 
does not own that song. The artist owns that song, and the license which was purchased by the developers or perhaps the producers of that video game. And you could make the argument, of course, the argument what he made to me, kind of, on Twitter, <laughs> put into nicer words, I think what he was trying to say was that I am not the one who purchased the license, so I don't have permission to use that song. I need to purchase the license or give the money to them. Now, there are quite a few problems with this, one of this being fair use law. My video is covered under fair use law as review. It's The stream is a review of the game in which I am playing through the game to show people what the game, the Guild 2 Renaissance, is and why they should purchase it or not purchase it so they can be informed going into it. No different, although lower in quality, than, say, Roger Ebert's old show, where he reviewed movies. And you see, with movie, with reviews of things, with for review or parody, especially review here, in the US law, you're allowed to use clips of, you're allowed to use clips or entire bits, like large amounts, as long as you're commentating it, you're giving opinion, you're doing something. You're allowed to upload that as review. That's why on Roger Ebert's show, they could use music from the movies they reviewed. They could use clips from the movies they reviewed, stuff like that, to help reinforce, like, they, they could easily say, like, well, there was that one scene in the movie when this happened, these are my opinions on it, and they can show a straight clip of that scene so that the audience watches that and says, okay, I understand what they're talking about now, and now I'm hearing their opinion on that, and I'm formulating my own opinion between that content I saw and what's going on. Now, here comes uh, Audium, this company, and they say that me saying that is not adequate. I am... It's not black... It's not a gray area. This is black and white. I own that content. It is an adaptive medium in which I was doing for review. Two things covered here. And it's not even the creators of the video game, The Guild 2, saying... Uh, d don't upload our video, in which I can still argue fair use. It's one piece of music in the game that I couldn't even hear, and someone is saying, no, 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 that music should go to the artist. And here's the problem. And again, I am not slandering Jeff Price. However, you are more than free to read every single comment he made. It's publicly available on Twitter right now if you go to myself or Jeff Price's Twitter. His Twitter is at TuneCoreJeff. And that's spelled exactly how you would think it is. No fancy lettering or anything, just TuneCoreJeff. And you can see the entire conversation there. I will also provide the, P, uh, the PDF of US copyright law that I included that I sent to Jeff to prove my case. He spent the entire time slandering me and insulting me. I'm not going to slander and insult him back. Because I feel like that goes nowhere. I don't want to be held liable in case he were to try and pull some underhanded thing like that. And I'm not a saying he's going to, but you never know. Anyone could. I'm not going to do that. Because I am absolutely right in what I'm doing. He ac accused me a thousand times of stealing artists' music. He was so... I don't know if he even watched the video, honestly. Despite me linking him to the video, he, at one point in the Twitter conversation, said that I was stealing a song. In fact, I'm going to go to that tweet right now and just read it to you. And again, you know I'm not making this up because you can go see it on his Twitter right now. Let me scroll down a little bit. At Madrybread, you want to make your own quotation song, end quote, and to make money on it using other artists' songs and not paying them. I actually retweeted that tweet, so that'll also be on my Twitter. It's, that's ridiculous. I did not, first of all, I, Madrat Stowe, did not use their song. The video game in which I was playing had that licensed song in it. I reviewed that game. Can you imagine the absurdity of this situation if Roger Ebert, let's say he was still live and his show was still on, let's say he used a clip of James Cameron's Avatar, and he was doing a review of Avatar, and I'm sure he did a review of Avatar, he shows a little bit of the trailer and some mountains, some floating mountains in the sky, some visual effects, and a little bit of the score. 
not only are they talking over it, in which they don't even have to be, by the way, for it to be caught, for it to be fair use. However, that little bit of the song, imagine if a company were to come along and say, you used a bit of that song that James Cameron licensed for his movie. So we're going to take all of the profits from your entire episode. That is absolutely illegal. And that's why this that's why this copyright law is in place, because if you were to have it so that you could pull copyright on you could pull copyright on a review then what would immediately happen is, of course, the majority of companies would just pull any review on their product that isn't positive, in which it would be a world of only positive reviews of any kind of content or product in existence, and then what's the point of review? You're not actually learning anything from it. Everything is positive. It could be complete bullshit. So, and the funny thing enough, it has nothing to do with the song in my video's case. I was doing the game. And in fact, my game was very positive for you, but again, it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. The song had nothing to do with anything. They're just trying to take my money. And the funny thing is, during this entire process, and they have 30 days to respond to this second claim before it's just dropped. So they have 30 days to either say, yeah, the claim is false, we'll get rid of it, or to say, no, the claim isn't false and go to the next step. In the meantime, in those potential 30 days, uh, a dime, and by extension Jeff Price, is taking all of the money that that video generates. I don't get any of that. So if it ends up being a false claim, and it is a false claim, and he gives it up after 30 days, then that company stole the money for 30 days. Legally, mind you, because weirdly enough, that is legal. However, that claim they made was illegal. They were not that claim. That's why the claim has to be removed, because they don't actually own it. It was a mistake. Now, Jeff, I suspect, and again, I'm not going to make an assumption on his part, I suspect he already knows this. Because as you'll see if you check his Twitter, every time I bring up the copyright law, and in fact, I sent him the PDF, too. Every time I brought it up, he literally started begging me at points. Begging me to just share the money with the artists. Well, Jeff, you're not asking me to share. You already pulled the trigger on it and started taking all the money. I don't even know if that money's going to the towards the artists. I'm not going to accuse you of anything, because I have no reason to believe anything. However, what I do know is that that claim is not legal. And the funny thing about it is, initially, I wasn't even ready to immediately say, Audium is at fault. Because there is a chance that this could have been a YouTube bot. And the YouTube bots have been awful with flagging stuff. Perhaps it was just a bot falsely flagging something. And as soon as a human looks at that, it, they'd be like, oh, we'll get rid of that. Because, like, that's been happening with Blizzard. It's been happening with Ubisoft. It's been happening with quite a few companies right now where they publicly say, hey, the bots are, are claiming some stuff in our name. Dispute the claim and show us and we'll fix it right away. That is not our doing. YouTube has been bad about that recently. Honest mistake. 20 minutes after I made my first dispute, though, they rejected the dispute. So either they had a bot look at it, either they had a bot look at it, either they had a human look at it who decided, the, the, a human could have looked at it and decided, um, hey, we, we think that uh, we're going to still pursue this, again, even though copyright law in the United States is very black and white. Um, or... It's possible, and this is unfortunately a very common thing, and I'm not going to say that this is what Adalium is doing, because I don't know. However, a very common th practice that's very much uh, looked down upon is they will kind of bully the user and hope that they'll back down and be scared of legal threat and decide to give in and they get the profit. And the funny thing about this whole thing is that video has about 125 views. Um, it's probably made less than a dollar. And yet they're still pursuing this thing so adamantly. Because when a company backs down to it, it, it makes people aware of their own rights. That they're allowed to upload these things. So you need to be very cautious. You need to educate yourself on these copyright laws, of course. Especially if you're doing gaming content. Because gaming content is especially gets flagged a lot on YouTube. So please, check out the PDF I have in the description. Really read up on the copyright law in the United States. Try and follow up on it. It hasn't changed in like 13 or 14 years now, but you never know when it does. 
for the most part, DMCA hasn't changed. Just keep your eye out for it. Look out for stuff like this. And again, all the tweets here are public. If you want to read them, they're all on my Twitter. My Twitter will be linked in the description, as will Jeff Price's, as who is the person I was speaking with. And I do want to point out one more thing, is that after a lot of this whole conversation went, I got a tweet from Adayim's, um, their company Twitter, which is the one that I originally tweeted, by the way. Um, and that one didn't engage in any of the honest, petty name-calling that Jeff's Twitter did. Don't know if it's managed by Jeff Price himself. However, it, there were some very there was very flagrant um, manipulation of the facts, outright lying, uh, insults, slander. You can read it all there, and there was a lot of it all directed at me, and I didn't return any of it. <sighs> However, Adolium tweeted me and said that they're going to contact the artist today and see if it's okay with them. So they're telling me they didn't even contact the artist before to see if it was okay with them to flag it or not. They simply did it and rejected it without even talking to the artist. And on top of that, even if the artist, who I doubt the artist is going to be as uneducated on copyright law, that or as much of a bully about this, as this company has been to me today, even if the artist were to say, yeah, I want the profits from that tiny YouTube video, Still co is still covered by copyright law. So again, I just remind everyone at home, really do read up on copyright law if you're doing anything on YouTube, even if you're doing vlogs on YouTube. I do recommend you really research it, because you never know when a false flag is going to come, as you can see today by me getting flagged for my voice. Until next time, have a nice day.